Hey, this is Wookie from Mandala Studios. Welcome to the workshop. Today it's part five of making a latex Grinch mask finishing details. So to start with, we're going to fix the fur hood onto the mask. So to start, we just pin it in a couple of locations with some hot glue and start to trim back the fur from the edge. And we do that at the top and the bottom to make sure that everything's centralized and even. Then we're going to work around the edge and start trimming back the excess fur so it matches the position of the hairline marked out previously. And we just trim off the bulk of the seam allowance of the fur there. Then we just glue it down in roughly the right, right place with some hot glue. We don't want to go too close to the edge because that might spill out, but quite close. We generally try and glue the fur onto the latex mask rather than the fabric behind it because it makes it a bit more stable and comfortable. And we just work our way around like that. Any excess fur position, uh, any excess fur is put in position around the jowls so that it's mostly hidden by the performer's chin. And we just work our way around, trimming the fur back with a razor blade, making sure we don't cut any of the pile. Get it to the line, glue it in place work around again a bit more. Once we've got the fur all pretty much in place we're going to start gluing the edge down neatly. So what we do for that is we run a thin bead of glue along the seam of the fur edge holding the fur back with my thumb and then I sort of roll the fur back from its base over the glue so that the base of the fur comes out of the glue and it looks a lot more natural you don't see the exposed edge of the fur fabric. Just work my way around all the way just doing this so that it all looks like it's neater than the raw edge. You could hand punch some fur in individually strand by strand to soften the edge I don't really do that very much on latex masks. It tends to rip up the latex a bit much for my tastes, but it is doable. You just need to glue it back in from behind. Then once that's all done, we're gonna move on to the eyebrows. So the eyebrows are done in much the same way as we did the rest of the fur hood. We'll start off by positioning them with soft pastels drawn on the mask, keeping a careful eye on the references, make sure everything's matching up to the look we're aiming for. I use a couple of different colours so that I can tell my iterations of design from each other. Then once we're happy with those positions and how I think they're going to look, just double check we've got a bit of fur that'll fit. Then we start to make up some rough sized thing templates and then we start to draw them on, eye them up, position them, eye them up, trim them to fit, make sure they fit right. We use folded paper so that we can see that they both look right when put on the mask. Then we start to cut the eyebrows out of a bit of fur we have lying around. It's really important to get the directionality of this right. You can see we're just tracing around it and cutting it out with a razor blade again, make sure we don't cut the pile. See we trace around the fur, trace around the paper with some soft pastel and then we cut the inside of it. It's an easy way to make sure we're getting the right shape without destroying anything or using too fine and hard a pen. Then we just glue that on again, hot glue, carefully position it each side and then we're going to go around the edge just like before careful thin bead of hot glue and then just roll that fur back into the glue from its base. Carefully work around the whole eyebrow. Have to be very careful around the very front edge of the eyebrow where it's most exposed. Then we're on to painting the base colours over the mask. This is going to be the nose and the lip in this case because it's all otherwise done via the spray base layer. So this is just some acrylic colours mixed with some prosthetic adhesive. We're using Pro Stick, you can use Prosade or any acrylic prosthetic adhesive. And we just mix that up about 50-50. And just carefully paint on the colours we want where we want them. So we've got the lip. 
You can see clearly here, I'm not sure we've mentioned it before, that the bottom jaw and lip is designed in the sculpture to be possible to cut out so that the performer can have more expression if they want. We left it on at the custom request here. But it's nice to have that option. You can see we're just carefully going around with the fur, uh, the nose, sorry, in a dark brown. And we're getting close there. Quickly dry it. I don't tend to dry things very much, but I wanted to get this done today. And then off onto airbrushing. So we're mixing up a greeny brown colour in the bottle, and we're just going to start adding the shading into the whole thing. Just gently misting it in into the nasolabial folds, all the creases around the eyes, just to add some depth, trying to make it look like the original picture. It's also useful at this point we're sort of tonally balancing the piece because the greens are a bit bright. And just trying to make it look as good as we can at this point, it's all just faff and art. Once we've done the greeny brown colour, we go in with the black around the nose, below the lip, around the eyes, particularly. Then onto adding the fur colour. Then once all that's got some ink into the fur, we start to dress the fur into the final position while the ink's wet, because that'll allow it to stick together a bit. It's just literally grab a hairbrush, pull it into place. Use your fingers, tease all those points together. And the wet ink will help all that stick together so it'll sort of semi retain that like hair spray would. And there we go, that's our finished mask. Thanks very much for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe and all that good stuff.